Here is the summer in full swing. We here on Open are swinging for the fences with our very own fantasy baseball expert, Mr. Mike Crocker. School me. <laughs> well, Sylvia, we'll start off right here. This is going to be my uh, kind of mid-season recap of what's going on so far. Okay. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and take it away. Uh, once again, welcome to the Fantasy Sports Corner. And uh, Fantasy Sports is now again relevant thanks to Fantasy Baseball. And as the summer season starts to settle in, it can only mean one thing. The fantasy baseball season is heating up. Now, a lot has happened since we last talked about fantasy baseball, so I'm here to recap some of the best and worst performers so far this season. We'll start off with the studs of the 2011 season, up to this point. And one of these guys is a guy that Bronx sides probably already know and other people around the country. That's right, I'm talking about the Grandy Man, Curtis Granderson. What I love about Granderson from a fantasy perspective is this. He's consistent. And consistency is hard to find in baseball, which is probably why the Yankees went out and traded for him. But like I was saying, the guy's batting 285 with 21 home runs and over 50 RBIs up to this point. And those stats have already got people thinking, Granderson for MVP? Moving on to the other side of the Yankee-Red Sox rivalry is a guy I originally picked back in April as a top 10 player. Of course, I'm talking about Red Sox first baseman, Adrian Gonzalez. Hate all you want, Yankee fans. This guy is the real deal. He can hit, field, and do everything else in between. He's leading the majors in RBIs and is a big part of why the Red Sox have a recent hot streak going on. And finally, a guy that might be a lesser known name and isn't a household name yet, but could be, seeing as how he's only 26 years old, remember the name Matt Kemp. He's an outfielder for the Dodgers, and boy, can this guy play baseball. Just picture a bigger, stronger, more athletic version of Curtis Granderson, only with that West Coast LA swagger to him. He's got almost the same exact stats as Granderson, except Kemp is batting a solid 328 batting average. Oh, and did I mention he steals bases? He is truly your classic five tool player and can do just about anything you ask him to. And he'll also do wonders for your fantasy team. So go out and try to trade for him if you can. All right, we're going to do a complete 180 on you as we call out some of the lesser productive players this season. Hanley Ramirez, I'm talking to you, buddy. You've been stinking up my fantasy team by only batting a measly 204. Considering I had the number two spot in my draft, there are times when I think what wonders I could have pulled off instead of selecting you there. It's time to put up or shut up, Hanley. Otherwise, it's the free agent market for you. Sorry about that last one, folks. Sometimes fantasy baseball can get just a little bit too on the personal side. Well, getting back into it, another slumping superstar Mets fans might be familiar with is their third baseman, David Wright. Now, I know currently he's injured and on the DL, but you don't get fantasy points for most innings spent on the bench. Or at least, not in my league, you don't. But even before that, he really wasn't living up to the kind of franchise player he's expected to be. And sure, there's been rumors of trading him and even Jose Reyes, but there's only one way to fix that. Hit, hit some more, score, and then repeat. Finally, my last fantasy dud thus far this season is Carl Crawford. That's right, folks. I'm not perfect. I had Crawford at my number 10 slot on my top 10 player list back in April. But to be honest, I expected a lot more from you, Carl. You're hitting okay. The home runs and RBIs department is okay, I guess. But the fact of the matter is, you're not stealing bases. And that's what you're known for and it doesn't help that you just landed yourself on the disabled list either. Real quick before I wrap things up, I want to revisit some of my bold predictions and see what I got right and wrong. One prediction I said that was probably going to happen was that the, Reni uh, excuse me, the uh, Boston Red Sox would finish in first place over the New York Yankees. Now the season isn't over, but so far I've been right. Although the lead is a very slim game and a half, the Red Sox appear to be as strong as ever, but beware, the Yankees aren't too far behind. Another bold prediction that I had was that my favorite team, the lesser-known Milwaukee Brewers, would make the playoffs. The Brewers, you might ask. Why them? I'll tell you right now. 
The record currently stands at 40 and 33, and they remain tied with the St. Louis Cardinals for first place in the NL Central. And if they can keep producing like they have, I foresee good things for my brew crew. And finally, one personal unrelated prediction that I conjured up was that my guy Charlie Sheen would be back on TV making America laugh in other ways than launching torpedoes of truth at unsuspecting trolls and warlocks. So two and a half men might be a little bit too much for Charlie Sheen, but hey, Charlie Sheen is not too much for me. Which is why I'm still pulling strong for my man, my favorite ex-Major League star. Well, that's going to do it for me here in the studio. Make sure to ask me any questions you might have or even sound off and give me your own personal opinion by going on to my Facebook page at Fantasy Sports Corner. That's Facebook.com slash Fantasy Sports Corner. Or you can even follow me at Twitter at Fantasy Open Mike. That's M-I-K-E. So, Mike, um, I see you came for the Jose Reyes's David yeah. Wrights of the world. Well, you know, I want to connect. I want, I want people to, you know, know the players that I'm talking about. And obviously there's been so many rumors of Jose Reyes and David Wright being traded. But then again, this could be all speculation. Uh, I mean, the Yankees are playing very well. The Mets, you know, obviously we're in a rebuilding stage. But, uh, you know, we'll probably get there. The Mets without David Wright? I know, it's, it sounds really weird, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just all business. And, uh, you know, that, that's just the nature of the game, Sylvia. I did know one of your players, Matt Kemp. Um, I, I, he was all over the gossip pages when he was dating Rihanna. So I don't oh, know too much about... This is, this is news to me. He's, really? dating, he's dating Rihanna right now. We need right to now? talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too much about baseball, but I do know my celebrities, and he was linked to Rihanna. Um, wow. It's one of those things. Well, I mean, he's, a, he's only 26 years old. Um, I mean, obviously the guy can play, so I don't think, you know, uh, we have to worry about him fading out anytime soon. I think uh, Rihanna picked herself a, you know, a good hubby. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. We look forward to seeing how the season goes. Hey, look, you know, I look forward to coming back and uh, coming here. Just, you know, I have a lot of fun doing it. Thank you.